Hey guys, we are continuing coverage here from AHR 2025 in Orlando. Andy, Becky, we are in the Grunfoss booth and today we're going to talk about how Grunfoss has totally redesigned how a circulator pump can work with domestic hot water. We've got a heating pump, we've got a couple recirc pumps, Becky. Why are these, how are these different and why does it matter? Because I think somebody watching this video might wonder, like, why, how is that any different from just a regular heating pump? Well, it's a great question, Eric, because up until now, there really hasn't been a lot of difference. Okay. When circulators for domestic applications first came out, all we did was take a three-speed heating pump or a single-speed heating pump and stick a stainless volute on it, right? And then we had to try to add a lot of different accessories like aquastats and timers and things because you don't want your research to run all the time. That's not very efficient. Right. But, you know... The systems are different. I mean, there are three, at least three that I can think of heating sources right now. We've got tankless water heaters, tank, hybrid combinations, heat pumps, and every one of them have different firing options. And it isn't as simple as just saying, I want speed one or I want speed two, right? So what we did was we started with what does a domestic hot water circulating pump need to do? It doesn't have to flow it. 15 gallons a minute, for most homes, it's maybe only one gallon a minute. And so why would you have a pump so big, using so much energy, pushing that much water when you're gonna high fire your tankless, or you may even kick your heat pump water heater out of eco mode. So what we did was we drilled down into speed regulation, temperature control. Uh, we looked into a lot of the new codes that are out right now through the IECC and through um, uh, California Title 24, they have some of the strictest tolerances out there. The pump starts and stops automatically, and we can adjust those run times. It has preset temperature limits, and it doesn't need an aquastat. The pump knows through very sophisticated algorithms what the return line temperature is, and as a matter of fact, it responds even better than an immersion aquastat. So that's something I noticed, you know, looking at this and as we've been talking about these pumps. There aren't any places for external sensors on these. Nope. There's no parts that we have to order. It's it's ready. It's ready to go it's right out of the It's ready just like you see it. The only optional accessory is this like crossover uh, for underneath the sink further away if you don't have like a dedicated return right. for research, right? So a retrofit system, and we designed this many years ago. And yeah. It was very, very popular. It used to have a an analog timer. But the problem was is that the pump was always deadheading against this valve, and it was a very inefficient pump. And sometimes you'd get a little heat migration moving across because as that valve opened and closed, it would keep bringing warm water into the cold. Not the best application. So what we do now, because the pump is so sensitive, it can actually register the pressure change from when this valve closes. So the minute it shuts off, the pump stops. So that bleed over has been incredibly reduced. Well, and I think for everybody watching, I want to explain really quick what this is. So there's a thermostatic kind of bypass inside of this fitting. We hook hot and cold underneath the sink to it. We hook hot and cold back up to the faucet. And this is going to allow like a bridge from cold or from hot to cold allows the pump to circulate water into the cold side a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Just based off where that little thermostatic valve is positioning. Very cool because there's no wires, there's no right. sensors. This is very easy to replace if something like water quality were to affect it, something like that. But they're pretty robust, right? Yeah. They are. I mean, and, and, like, and like Becky had said too, I mean, they've been around for a long time. This isn't new tech. No. no. One of the questions that I get a lot, and I get this from my installers, the, my guys out in the field, how many of these can I put on this circulator? Okay, that's a great question. I know that I have personally seen up to six of them in a home, but I've actually been told it'll handle eight. Okay. But here's the thing, you don't need these at right. every single fixture, right. right? Right. You want it at the furthest fixture from the source, but every other sink, along, lavatory... Along the way, but you might have a way. split in kind of the way your architecture so, is, right? Yeah, so I'm from the Midwest and we have basements and you got my heating source in the bottom and this direction goes to the kitchen and the laundry and that direction goes to the bedrooms. Yeah, yep. very typical. So I put this one under the laundry sink. Okay. And I put the other one under my master bath lavatory, and I have hot water everywhere. Everywhere, yep. And two valves, one pump. 
Okay. The one thing I like, so like Andy's got this loose model here. It's the Union Connection. You've got it capped off because you're using these as displays. You're actually running them with no water flowing through That's them, right. which, is, which is impressive. <laughs> But the display is real simple. So you've got some, it's not touch screen, but it kind of feels like it because there's no like physical buttons. Right. But you've got the ability to change settings on these. So can you quickly walk us through like what the settings are? And also like, I know, I noticed you have an icon in here to connect a phone to it. You've got the Grunfoss Go app. I've used it for heating bumps in the past. Yep. Do I use the same app for hot water research? You sure do. We do have... I need to use an app? That's also another question. Because okay. some people would be like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want another app on my it. phone. I get it. And you know, it's it's really designed to be a commissioning tool. A lot of people have an app and it's really nothing but fluff and marketing. So what we really wanted to do was make sure that what we're using is a contractor tool. Okay. Right? When you commission the pump, the first thing you're gonna get is a question about what is your heating source? Okay? And we're going to drill down in that logic until we meet the right constant pressure. Is it constant curve? Is it auto adapt? And auto adapt can mean a lot of different things because every system is different. If you're concerned about a tankless water heater, then you need to make sure that you're hitting that minimum BTU fire rate. That depends on flow. If you put too much flow through it, then you go into high fire, right? Yeah. So what we've done is we can actually load the BTU min fire into the pump and it will activate um, based on that flow rate. But the default on the pumps, okay, this one comes in temperature control auto adapt, okay? It's always going to look for the lowest flow rate to meet the preset temperature of 102. I think that's... As a contractor, if somebody's going to install this, I'm going to be honest with you, maybe I'm unique, maybe Andy will say something different. I don't want to spend all day trying to set this thing up. No. Right. Like, I know what it's supposed to do, and my number one concern is that it's moving water. Right. Uh, I would love for it to default into the least amount moving possible so that it's functional. Yeah. Right. For one main concern, when I leave that house, I don't want my customer calling me back saying, Every time I get in the shower, it's cold and I got to right. wait. Right. Because that's why we installed this in the first place, right? Look, I understand that there's a lot of environmental benefits. Sure. 100% on board with that. The reality is, is that a contractor, we do service, we do repair, we talk to you, the homeowner, our customer. And when you're not happy that we spent a whole bunch of money to do something and it didn't quite meet our expectations, not because the product didn't work. I right. want to point that out. It's because we didn't do it right. Right. right, right. So how do I, so like that's where you're, that's kind of where why you've started there, right? Correct. Default mode is we're going to run this the least amount possible to maintain a warm recirculation. Warm yeah. Best efficiency point okay. in the system for comfort. But they look at two different protocols, the length of the time cycle, but number one is temperature. If I can satisfy the temperature, then the time cycle doesn't matter, right? So the pump comes on by default to run for five minutes and to stop for 15. And you can change that if you want to through the commissioning app. But if it senses the temperature is correct before that five minutes, it stops. That is the number one priority is to make sure that the hot water is there when you need it. Right. And it's sensing it at the pump itself? It is. Okay. It is. So in a, in a bypass type system, so we're using a thermostatic bypass. Sure. Where are you mounting this pump with the unit? This is the best part because it already comes with a swivel. Okay. So you just take off the connection to the hot water discharge from your water heater, mount it directly to the top of the water heater. It has a long pigtail so you can plug it in. Okay. Put your connection on the top of the pump and then look for your furthest fixture. It is simple, just you're in that. and out. Yeah. On, a, on a standard tank type yep. you know, system, that's great, that's yeah. super easy. A lot of people watching this might wonder, like they see the heating pumps in our videos. Right. Maybe they've installed a ton of them like us. You see the flange connections. In the US, this is very common. We see it on all of our heating systems. You offer it flanged for, I would imagine that this application is probably looking to be into, you know, multifamily, something a little bit larger. Like or commercial even. Yeah, or commercial. But for most residential work, we're looking at the, the these are union connections, guys. These are. These are capped off for display purposes, but this right. is a this is a union connection that you can have pretty much any type of piping connection sure. for, yeah, sure. or, or even an valves. MPT swivel on the bottom. But that's okay. our that's our retrofit unit. Obviously, the best way to do hot water recirculation is with a return line. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Having yeah. a dedicated return line. And this pump is available in even its smaller twin sister, the 29, is available in a union connection. Okay. So we do these in flange for display because it was easier for us to fill them that way. <laughs> oh. But, you know, it was uh, it was another situation. They are sold out in the market, though. I see them oh, in yeah. stock in my yeah. market oh, yeah. in a flange, too, because I just bought one and installed it the other day. It uh, And I didn't, I wanted the union because that's what I had on the van. I had oh. the parts and pieces I needed. Yeah. Even the valves and I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, I like that. Yeah. But then there's like, oh, we got is a flange. I'm like, uh. Well, yeah, but do we do? We is. make it in union. Yeah. So how many different pump sizes do we have? Okay, so the comfort system comes in one size, one size. and it's okay. always this connection style. We have the 1555, and then there's a slightly smaller unit called the 1529. Okay. If you remember, we used to have a UPS 26 or 1529. So right. it's the, basically the same pump, little bit smaller performance, little bit less expensive, and it is also available in Union Connection, which by the way, that thing has a hydraulic efficiency rating over 200. That's crazy. These are super efficient. Yep. ECM motors, like look, I know the number, like it's not top of the list for our friends watching this video, power consumption, but it is important to it's say important. that guys, yep. there's a lot of, a uh, lot of, R&D, a lot of technology went into making these circulators use the absolute least amount of energy. And you're not only doing that with the motor itself, but how you're operating that motor with right. the software. The volutes, the, everything yeah. was completely redesigned for efficiency. And you make a great point. It, it, sustainability is wonderful, and, and but what we really care about is comfort, right? And saving right. money. And the cost of sewage and water is outpacing the cost of inflation. So it, you know, people want to pay their bills. And this will help them stop wasting water and sewage, and it will not break them on electricity. Yeah. So no, it's not right. like you're trading both directions. We want people to be able to afford it. We also want to make it so simple that if you said, hey, I want hot water recirculation in my house, you're not talking about big dollars either. No, no, and it shouldn't be. It's a, it's a people think of it still as a luxury until yeah. they have it and they're like that i'll never live without right. it. right my customers say that all the time you oh. and i talk about it like just getting in the shower hitting the button turning the dial whatever and it's hot within just a few seconds amazing until you live with that you don't know what you're missing and it's it, the the benefits are of course it's good for our environment it's sure. good for our pocketbook things like that but it's also good for for you know if you're trying to to entice businesses to come into your areas they need water Right, and who wants to build another water treatment facility, right, or another tower? So let's just save a little bit. Yeah, yep. yeah, right on, Becky. Thank you so much. This sure. is awesome. The only one thing I did want to mention is that the part that you, you mentioned about callbacks. Okay, yeah. these are dry run protected. The reason why they're filled and capped is that they would not run if they were dry. They could potentially, but if these, pro if you ever have a water interruption, let's say the somebody comes in and wants to put in an ice maker and they tea drill and shut the water off and they forget all about your pump, pump won't burn up. It will stop. It will try to restart itself every 30 seconds for almost two hours. If the water's restored, it comes right back online. Interesting, Very cool. I had no idea. Yeah. That's a good feature. That's cool. Becky, thank you so much. You are welcome. Uh, cool, cool stuff. Yeah. I, I have installed it guys, uh, this model, the flange version of this and um, it's great. It works great. It's new to me. Uh, I think it's been available for a little while. Oh, we, we launched it uh, at the beginning of last year. Yeah. Well, so it's starting to pick yeah. up and we're getting some getting a lot of attention. Guys, check out the Mechanical Club <laughs> YouTube channel. There's tons of coverage here from the show 2025 AHR. Andy and I have been to a bunch of great yep. uh, visits into the booth and especially today, Becky. Thanks for You're welcome. having us. It's always good to see you guys. Mm -hmm.